Welcome back to Switched to Linux. It is Monday and it is time for another Linux Top 5. And so we're going to be talking about the top 5 improvements made to Linux Mint 19, at least in the beta release. Uh, so we're going to be having a quick look here at uh, what is new in store for Linux Mint. The beta has been released, uh, announced today, but it was actually released over the weekend, uh, maybe as early as Friday. Um, I know I've been looking at it for the last couple of days. Uh, in a virtual box and uh, you can come over here and you can don't grant download this that's an app <laughs> or that's an ad <laughs> um, but uh, you can follow this down and you can get the what's new you can get the release notes uh, one of the great things is that they still are releasing a 32-bit ISO of Linux Mint um, bootable in BIOS so if you are having that need you can grab that uh, you can grab your download links down at the bottom of this. This is a beta. Do not use it on a production machine yet. Um, if you are experimenting with the beta, you can roll into the final release. And I haven't read it yet, but usually the Linux Mint team has an upgrade path from the 18.3 up into 19. I'm guessing that's also going to be the same. Now, there are numerous changes, and you can read through this document. You can read through the what's new. I'm going to identify here, because this is a top five, the top five improvements that I have seen in Linux Mint Cinnamon uh, 19. Number five is we have a new welcome screen. The new welcome screen, it's a lot cleaner. It's a lot more, uh, it, it just looks a lot more user friendly. There's less stuff all over it. It's just cleaner and it is a little bit simpler. So here we are in the desktop. Uh, you can see that we are in rendering uh, software mode. One of the bugs that I found is in a VirtualBox, if I install the VirtualBox guest editions for Ubuntu 18.04, it removes pesky little things like the welcome screen and the update manager for some reason, no idea why. So I'm just gonna leave it in software rendering mode. Um, I haven't really noticed much uh, much difference here. Um, but what we see now in our welcome screen, it's uh, very simple here. Um, we have the option here to show it in the, in the dialogue. Now, what we have here now is we have the first steps. What are the things you wanna do? And we're gonna be talking about these uh, in turn but there are some very good improvements to how the system works. We're going to be looking at those. We have documentation over here. So these will launch out documentation, uh, new features, and release notes. We have help buttons over here, and we have our... Um, uh, our basic contribution option. You will notice here that um, we do have icons. I actually, while I'm not a huge fan of these modern type icons, I do find these very nice, very attractive icons. I probably wouldn't change these if I were installing something. Um, they're not exactly what I like, but they are very nice, very sharp, so I do like those very much. Uh, so let's go ahead and uh, close up talking about the new welcome screen and go into my number four pick. Number four, we have a change in the update manager. One thing that several people over the years have criticized Mint for is this confusing way of doing updates. I never found it confusing, but regardless, Linux Mint team says, you know what, if that's all people want to whine about, let's get rid of it. And they did. So of course it's still down here. It's actually under my picture. So let me get rid of my uh, my picture here, uh, so you can see where I'm at. So down here, when you first launch the update manager, it is going to do a few simple things. Okay. Now of course uh, this is telling you what it's going to do. It's going to apply security updates. There are software updates, and this is going to be what we're going to be talking about next. But we have the time shift integration. These two kind of go hand in hand, but I wanted to talk about them separately. So when you go ahead and click next, the first thing it's actually going to do is uh, it's going to ask you about your uh, about making system restore points. Again, we're going to get into that a little bit more later. But what you will see is you do not get the immediate question, which level of, of updates do you want? Instead, it's going to default to give you all of the basic updates, and then it's going to rely on system snapshots in case there's any errors. Of course, we still have the option to check out our Linux kernels up at the top, and we are uh, it does give you the warning message. We are shipping with uh, 4.15 Linux kernel, so the Linux kernel is, is pretty up to date. 
And then, of course, you can do all the standard things um, like hiding, uh, you know, hiding certain packages. Everything is selected by default, but if you know, for example, there's one particular package you don't want to update or uh, it's something that uh, may be problematic, you don't want to test mess with it right now, you can deselect it, you can hide it, you can still do all that kind of stuff. So great improvements to, uh, to how the update manager works. Number three, time shift integration. Now, time shift was first introduced in Linux Mint Cinnamon in 18.3, I believe. What time shift basically is, is it gives you a snapshot of your system so you can create a basically a restore point. If you're used to Windows, you will be familiar with, I think they integrated it around, I don't think it was an XP, it was either Vista or 7. Uh, where they integrated the restore point, which is a great thing. Anytime you update software in Windows, it creates a system restore point. If there's a foul up, you can go back. And, and that's really, uh, it's, a, it's a neat thing. This is one of those features I personally wouldn't use as much, but I'm very happy that it's here, it's front and it's center. And that is, of course, the orange strip that you may have seen at the top of the update manager. It will prompt you to sign this up. You can still update without it, okay? Uh, but it will prompt you to set up your time shift snapshots. So what this is going to do is it allows you to go in here and um, go ahead and select what uh, what type of system you're going to do, how you're going to sync it, and then it's going to create a it's going to create a um, a system restore point, same type of thing that you see in Windows. So now it's active, we can hit our restore, uh, we can hit wizards, I believe we can set it up to do it automatically. Um, I, this Again, this is an application I don't use a lot, I'm very glad it's here, I as a personally use a different uh, backup system, uh, but time shift is absolutely awesome, it is a great integration and I'm very happy to see that they have put it right front and center in the update manager so you can get in there, you can set up your time shift, you can make your system restore point, and then if any of those updates caused a foul up, go back into your time shift, restore your computer back to the earlier point, and you are good to go. Absolutely awesome integration on, on this on the behalf of the Mint team. Number two, there were some improvements to Nemo and Cinnamon. Um, so some of these uh, I'll, I'll point out and show you, but uh, there's a lot of little tiny nuts and bolts going on back behind everything. They're always making improvements, and this to me is good because I thought that Cinnamon, um, or uh, not Cinnamon, but Nemo had gotten a little bit worse for a little bit. They introduced a couple little bugs with adding new features uh, a couple... Uh, uh, a couple releases ago, which allowed you to sort your desktop icons differently, things like that. I thought that that introduced a few little issues that made things not work as well. All those issues seem to be resolved. There's also just a lot of other tiny bug fixes, um, uh, GNOME fixes on Cinnamon, uh, and translated kind of into Nemo. And so the biggest one that always drove me crazy is if you are moving some files over on your system, Okay, what you'll get is you, you're now transferring all these files over, and if you opened this up, you could not actually open another window until these were done copying. I'm very glad they had that type of thing fixed. Minor, possibly, but when you use a system as robustly as I do, these are critical fixes. I'm very glad, glad to see that they've actually fixed all that. Um, so that is now uh, that is now resolved. Of course, we have Cinnamon um, 3.8 here, so involved with all of the f uh, the critical fixes that come along with that. Which I didn't follow the development of that quite as closely, but all of those types of things are integrated. Before we get into our number one, uh, just wanted to let you know how you can help support this channel. You can check out switchtolinux.com forward slash support. Those are all the means to help support the channel. Uh, there's a direct PayPal link over there. If you like shopping at Amazon, you can use our affiliate link down in the description below. It doesn't cost you anything else, but uh, it does help send a small portion of that sale over to what we're doing. Um, Patreon.com forward slash Tom M is where you can find me on Patreon. And you can also pick up uh, coffee cups, t-shirts. Uh, I even have a nice mouse pad for Switch to Linux at shop.switchtolinux.com. So you can check those out over there. My number one pick 
is online account integration is greatly improved, particularly your NextCloud integration. If you're like me and you value your privacy and you're using NextCloud instead of Google and Apple and Microsoft and all of these other things, uh, if you remember the old version of um, Cinnamon for the online accounts, when you connected your NextCloud, the only thing it would give you is it'd give you a, uh, a linked access to your drive. So that would be over here, which I'm not going to click that because it'll mount that and expose the, the URL where my drive is at. All right. Uh, but now you can click on this and now you can drag and drop files directly from your computer or over here. Uh, if that's already linked, you should be able to make a backup directly to that if you have enough uh, server space or bandwidth to do that type of thing. But now we have greater improvements where the calendar also syncs, the contacts also sync, so it also syncs your documents. Okay, so now where that causes some, some good significance is the GNOME calendar is now on the system by default. I don't remember it being there before. Uh, so if you go back to your, your calendar and I go you know, roll back my, my month, you'll see that it will actually drop your calendar items from NextCloud onto this. Do the same with the GNOME contacts, which I'm not going to open here because that will expose the contacts. Um, but what this is going to do, now you have to install contacts. It does not come pre-installed, but that will actually also sync all your contacts into GNOME contacts from NextCloud. So if I were at my computer, get a new contact, add it, it automatically adds to the cloud, and then by chance will sync to everything else that I'm using the cloud services for. All right, but if you also happen to use Evolution, as I do for your email client, not only will this do your email client, but it will automatically sync your calendars to your next cloud and your contacts to your next cloud. So this is a massive improvement with how online accounts are integrated. Um, and uh, I think that that brings the next cloud functionality up to where the other ones were. I'm pretty sure Google may have done at least half of that, if not all of that. And I'm not sure where the status of Microsoft accounts are. Um, but that is uh, that really is uh, is the options that you have. So that to me is is huge as you're moving on into this future century where we are doing more and more online computing. Not necessarily my thing, but I do have my own personally hosted cloud on Nextcloud, and this system will now completely integrate with everything I need it to do. That is a fabulous, fabulous thing. So those are my top five picks for the greatest changes from Linux Mint 18.3 to Linux Mint 19. Let me know what your favorite improvements have been in the comments down below. So thank you for watching this video, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.